It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our go. Hey! It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Pop. I'm here with my pal Kira Sultanovich. We have a good show today. Very good. We have Kyle Kinane, the great comedian Kyle Kinane is coming on the program. He has a new special called Dirt Nap <laughs> <laughs> that is coming out on the YouTubes. Just one of the funniest comedians. He's so great. I'm gonna very excited to uh, sit down with him today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Before we start, though, I have to, I have to tell you a story, a quick little story, and then... You tell me how I should feel about it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Kyle's the greatest. It's going to be a great interview. This has nothing to do with Kyle. I don't want you to think like anticipating this has something to do with Kyle Kinane. No, that's just pure joy and comedy love. But another person who we work with pretty often is Joey. <laughs> also known as four ounce. Yeah. And he's not here today because we were in Lexington, Kentucky and doing a show. He came with me on the road this weekend and we did Charlotte, North Carolina. Then we went to Nashville. Then we went to Lexington, Kentucky. He did a great job. He comes on the road, he does tour managery stuff. He deals with all the books and stuff and helps with the merch. And we show him the world. <laughs> it seems to be a big part of it. And he was great. He came with Paul Morrissey. Yep. Was the funny. opening act. And we're leaving Lexington, Kentucky. For some reason, Nashville was 10 degrees when we were there. Lexington was 15 degrees. And as we're going to the show, snow starts falling. And all <laughs> the whole time, Paul's on his phone we're trying to get flights. And he's like, I... I I'm supposed to go to Dallas, but they're saying it might sleet in Dallas. And if they don't want, if if it does, they cancel everything because they have no de-icers and they don't know how to deal with that kind of weather. So the whole time we're keeping track of the weather, it's this whole thing all weekend long. So it comes down to today, this morning, when we ha are leaving Lexington, Kentucky, and who's in the hallway after he said he was going to fly to Dallas the night before? Paul, he got a, an alert at 2.30 in the morning saying your flight has been canceled. And he got rebooked onto my flight, which was going to Chicago and connecting from Chicago. And this is how bad the weather is around the country. The best option was to go oh, no. to Chicago, where with the wind chill, it was minus 27 this morning. Legit, it was one or two. So we're thinking there's a good chance we're not going to make the interview with Kyle Kinane. There's a good chance we're going to be staying in Chicago. I mean, it's snowing here in Lexington yeah. as we speak. So we get there, they're plowing the runway. <laughs> oh my God. And then they take us over and they spray it down. You know, when you have that yeah. moment, yeah. you know, yeah. where they're like, we got to de-ice it. And you're like, well, this is going to add a half hour, right? Yeah. And then when you're in line, you're like, oh, we're, we're fifth in line to de-ice. <laughs> right. What? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, How, have you built this in to the itinerary? But it's, it's all going smoothly. And we take off. Joey is in the way back with his little wheelie bag. So all three of you are on your way to Chicago. I'm in first class. Okay. Paul got upgraded to first class. Nice. Joey's in the last row of the plane. <laughs> Oh. So we take off, we land, everything seems like I actually texted and I don't I I knew I shouldn't have when I did it. I texted to the two of them from my seat. Holy cow, we did it. Oh, you jinxed it. I jinxed it. Because the plane did not have a gate, an open gate for us to park in. Then it started driving down. I think it's Route 70 <laughs> and went for like yeah, a, a 20 mile drive. It's better drive. when you're like in the Walmart parking lot and the plane's like, we just have to 
drive around a little bit. And then they think, then you think, and then it parks for 10 minutes and then it starts up and you're like, okay, now we're moving. And then drove for another 10 minutes. And then you look out your window and you're next to a fence. It's like, what is happening? Gate wasn't ready. Switch to another gate. Now a spirit airline is blocking the thing. Our flight to take off was 9.55. And we landed with plenty of time. But now it is 9.55. And I feel the guy next to me. I'm getting phone calls from the airline because I have high status yeah. on American Airlines. And the guy next to me, I can tell, has it also. Oh. He's getting the call too. And the woman calls and says, okay, when you get off, this is like the third call. When you get off, we're going to have a cart. We're going to try and get you on the 10 o'clock that hasn't boarded yet. It's like, all right. And I really wasn't that stressed. I wasn't like freaking out. You know, yeah. if we don't make it, you know, we tell Kyle we have to redo it. it. It's not the end of the world. You know, it's not like I had to get to a gig filled with yeah. a theater of people. That's that's the stress, worse. right? Yeah. Yeah. When you know that they're all waiting for you and they've and they've for a month and you it, it, this isn't an audience thing. So we can always get around and we can always re-record. <laughs> but I'm still anxious. I still want to get it there and we get off the plane. Now it's 9:58 and there's a golf cart there and a woman from Concierge Key and she says to me and the guy I was eyeing across the uh, the aisle. He, he was another con concierge key. She goes, get in the cart. And Paul's uh, two people ahead of me. He's just going, Papa, he has to get to, to here for a gig in Palm Springs tonight. He had to oh. land and then drive to Palm Springs. So he's really freaking out because he has to make the gig. He has people waiting. He's just going, Papa. She goes, what? She didn't understand who this man was who was trying to get on her cart. I'm like, he's my friend. He's my friend. She goes, we've got to go right now. Okay. We throw the luggage on the back of the cart, and she starts booking it through O'Hare, honking at people, dodging families. Paul's suitcase goes flying off. Someone yells, bag, we have to stop. I go running out. I get it. I throw it back on the cart. Oh my and I God. hear the guy in the front. He's in the front seat. And he's like, so where are we going? She goes, we're going to try and get you on the 10 o'clock. It hasn't boarded, it hasn't boarded yet. He goes, what about our original flight? Can we still make that one? And I'm like, oh, he's doing everything that I would do. And I'm going to let him be the dad because he's saying all the right things. And I'm just going to kick back. And this is all happening, like, during a race. Yeah. And during a car race. And she's honking and she's going... All right, we could make, we could try. I, 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 she's on her walkie-talkie. Is the door still open? Is it still going? And here we go. And we, she goes pulling in. <laughs> I have two concierge keys and their friend. And the friend. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved for her to yell. And his opener. <laughs> they were just about to shut the door. Oh my god. We go over. We scan our boarding passes. They get us on. Paul's on. He's going to make his gig. The guy and I end up in first class right next to each other, just like fist bumping, like, dude, that one's epic. That was epic. And we're just just so happy, and we're just exalting, and that we've, I can't believe we're on this flight. I was like, what hotel? I'm literally on my phone booking a flight oh. on United, looking for another flight. I'm just paying and hoping I can cancel. If it, the, whole, the whole shit show. Doors close, and I realize we don't have Joey. <laughs> Did you do one of these, like Home Alone? <laughs> uh... I feel like I'm forgetting something. Huh. What was it? Wait a second. Do you have your carry-on? No. My child? It's your hat. I bet it's your hat. <laughs> I bet it's your hat. You don't have your hat. No, I have my... Joey! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <sighs> Meanwhile, you guys made that whole journey, but since he's in the back of the plane, he's still waiting to get off. Legit. I guarantee you. When we got on the plane, he yeah. said, I'm just getting off. Oh my God. So if we had waited, we don't get on. No, 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 no. So he's now in North Carolina connecting to get back to LA 
And I think he'll get in at 10 o'clock tonight. What? Yeah. Holy cow. So you tell me, how should I feel about it? Um, you should feel like you have concierge key for a reason. I did think that. At yes. One point. This is why for these moments, 30 years of accumulating that's miles. That's exactly it. And being Joey in the back. And one day Joey will get there. <laughs> one day Joey will be driving through O'Hare. Uh-huh. And his luggage will fall off and he'll ha ha ha. Because there is that thing when you travel, when you fly with friends. Yeah. And like, especially when you land back home and you're all spread out on the plane. Like right. If you have your, you know, you, the people you're touring with. Yes. If it's your family, you're waiting. Yes. But it's kind of, and I learned this, it's kind of when you land back home. There's no waiting to say goodbye and walk no. to baggage claim. No. We're all no. on our own at this point. That's even though right. we're close, even though we love each other, we're now out into the world. Yeah. Right? Once you touch down Which is weird your... for me, honestly. Well, no, I think that's the appropriate thing. Yeah. Yeah. Chris... It is appropriate, but it is a little bit weird. Like, did we say goodbye enough? Chris Porter and I ran into, into each other once at LAX. I've run into Chris Porter more than any comedian <laughs> ever. I, I, I've seen him in Chris Porter... <laughs> I mean, I've seen him in airports. Yeah. So many times. So many times. First of all, he's so tall. Yes. You can see him. We're probably seeing other comedians and you, not seeing you're them. You're not seeing them because right. they're just kind of like within the crowds. But you see Chris Porter in his hair. <laughs> it's you're like, true. Chris Porter. He's always wearing a hat that's like so cool. And yeah. Like he's in a music video. Yeah. And we, he actually, we went to the first class lounge together. We hung out before yeah. our flight, like as if we were traveling together. Uh -huh. And then you go, oh, I'm going to go use the restroom before. And then he waited for me because we're going to the same, we were going to the same flight. Right. So in those moments, oh, that's cool. Cause we're kind of, yeah. now Teamed if, up. if I was sitting in the bathroom for 50, I'm not expecting him. Yeah. We're not really traveling together. Right. Get yourself on the plane and I'll deal with this diarrhea or right. whatever is happening. Why am I taking right. so long? But it was very nice. He waited. We walked together. We were hanging out. I did not expect at all. Yeah. After the flight for us to yeah. even speak unless we. If we're touring. Well, if we're touring, yes. I always feel like we stay together. On the way, I will wait for you. Yes. To get on the plane, to go to the gate. It would be weird to leave the lounge and not wait for you. Or like if right. you wanted to make a quick stop for a coffee, I would join you. Or, you know, or unless you said I'm going to meet at the I've gate. sent you ahead. I go, you go, you go, go, yeah. go, go. I'll, I'll, you know, and I brought you something. But, once. but you're more of a team <laughs> on the way to the gigs yeah. and then coming back. Well. So I see your predicament. I would feel bad. Right? Uh-huh. But is he... I didn't... Yeah. Is he considered... You, just, you feel bad because he's... Well, yeah, he's stuck in a... He wants to be home, too. He wants right. a hot shower in of his course. own bed, too. And, yeah. Um. Now, here's a question. This might be too personal. Mm. Is he on the clock? He is on the clock. What? That's it's true. It's fine. I did not think about he's that. He's on the clock. That's true. American Airlines just screwed I, he, me. He is go he's going to wish and hope and pray for wind chill factors or what? I mean, yeah, yeah. he's fine. He's yeah. fine. And then this he didn't actually, have to get he didn't have to get in the car and come to the podcast. He didn't have to podcast today. Yeah. You you're know, right. but he's still part of the podcast cuz he's in the story. Uh he found a way to squeeze in. <sighs> ah, what a scammer. 4 ounce. You're right. We should fire him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's doing okay. He probably is ecstatic. Yeah. Right? All right. He get to hang out in North Carolina, get paid. Another place he's never been. Well, he was in the beginning of the week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I feel good you about feel that. You feel better? I feel good. Yes, I feel better. Good. And I'm going to feel more better when we start our interview with Kyle Kinane. Did you see his special? Listen, so funny. I'm not gonna give away dirt nap because it's a funny reveal. Yeah. Um, but it was I was like, dirt nap. He's oh such a good God. comic. It's it was so funny. Top to bottom. He's so he's good. great. Yeah, he really is great. Let's see what he has to say. Enjoy. 
Kyle Kinney. Let me start off by saying that I apologize because I just flew in from Lexington, Kentucky, that I did not get to bake you bread. Oh. But I will find you and give you <laughs> bread. I bake bread for every one of our guests, and I it was killing me the whole flight. I was like, what, what else can I do? How can I do it? I apologize, but I, like I still it, love you. It came out as a threat. I will find you. <laughs> I'll find I'll you. Make sure you. And I'll force bread. feed you this bread. Oh, that's it because you tape this in Los Angeles. Do you have a lot of people like I'm? Doing, I'm not doing carbs right now. We get some. We yeah. get some. One of them is Kira. Really? <laughs> yeah, the Don't worst person you could have as a co-host on a bread I'm show. She honestly, only eats meat right now. I'm the worst, and we could not be more opposite because I watched your special. So I want to apologize. Oh, I am. You know, your arch nemesis. What do you mean? I, In what way? He does a whole vegan bit. Wow. No, I'm not. No, I'm not okay. We, we got to correct it. I'm not. I'm a vegetarian with a lot of hall passes. Okay. I still. <laughs> I quit eating meat. It went from. It went from like a health thing because I've done. Plenty of jokes about like having gout and everything. And then it went into some of the, you realize like, like you have black or white thinking, like that's like whatever medical condition that is where you can't see a gray area. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to eat chicken, may as well eat somebody's dog because they're animals are animals. <laughs> and then I went that way with it. And I'm like, well, that's not how the world works. And also you're wearing leather shoes. I'm like, yeah, but that was already dead. So I like just using the other parts. And like, yeah. I have a syst- I have a hierarchy in my head of things that I allow and don't allow. I don't put it on anybody else. Uh huh. So right. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. You're, you're fine. Okay. Fi- that's I can look at somebody. Kira. Yeah. I can look at somebody eating a steak, and I know it's good. I know it's delicious. Right. Yeah. And right. I'm just like I'm just not doing that these days. But that bit of your dad having a veggie burger. <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh... I mean, <laughs> listen. I was at Sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to <laughs> maybe not the place to hear that. Bit. I listen to specials like their podcasts, right? Yeah, because I know what you look like. Uh, I don't have idea. to watch you. I just listen. I'm <laughs> shopping. I'm like and yeah. and I'm doing this comedy laugh that we tend to do as comics. Ah, yeah, nice. And I'm doing it in sprouts <laughs> as I'm behind people. They think I'm being rude. Like get out of the way. I'm trying to get to the avocados, but I'm just like honking at them with my stupid <laughs> comic laugh because I don't. We don't know how to laugh at stand up yeah. unless it's ah and i'm doing that like consistently through that bit well God. loved it yeah but it, i also felt graphic. bad yeah. i was like oh it is graphic uh, you're uh, the people other people are at sprouts i, I went grocery no. shopping today and i'm like yeah I feel bad. no i felt bad because i was like i'm gonna have to tell them that i am the complete polar opposite oh yeah but the, i don't care i like watching People have food that looks good. Right. I don't. I got gotcha. you. It doesn't upset me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. I, I'll break. I broke last December. I watched. My girlfriend will get stuff. Girlfriend, it's 10 years. Maybe it's been my wife. But yeah. uh, <laughs> she'll get stuff. She'll be like, you want to try it? I'm like, Come on. No, I don't want to try it. And then she got this one dish that had like beef brisket. And she just goes, this is something else. <laughs> and like had a face of like. <laughs> <laughs> didn't ask me to try it. I was like, this is something else. I'm like, all right, let me try it. And then I tried it. And because I don't have like a lot of impulse control, I'm like, all right, that's it. December, I'm just going to eat meat all month. Like I went nuts. I had barbecue. <laughs> I had all my favorite. Cause it's not like I gave up the best cuts of meat or the, like the yeah. finest fillets or yeah. anything. I was eating trash. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I, you could still get a, a shitty fake Whopper at Burger King that mm. sucks just as bad as a real Whopper. Cool. I'll live off that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I went nuts all do you last do that ex- Do you do that with with most things, like extremes? Like I'm, yeah. I'm doing this, so then I'm just going to plow and. Yeah. I mean, well, not, I, I don't know or why. Quit. Like, I just, yeah, I want to define myself by one or the other, that there shouldn't be this gradient. And I don't know why that's, I don't know why that is. Uh-huh. Of like, you know, like I've yeah. got real bad road rage tendencies that I'm trying, definitely need to curtail being back in L.A., yeah. But like I'm gonna sit there and have road rage at somebody for not using a turn signal. Meanwhile, I casually always drive twenty miles over the speed limit. But I'm not <laughs> impeding somebody else <laughs> right. unless I crash and you know cause a pileup. So like like yeah, well, why am I looking at it like yeah. there's only there's the rules that are old for you, but for me, because I know what I'm doing, it's fine. So I'm, now is it difficult for you because you look like you have a smoker in your backyard? I have to turn down a lot of things on the road. I mean, yeah, I feel like, yeah. right? 
Yeah, I should be the most. I mean, I gave myself the nickname Uncle Barbecue when I was starting, just because I was like, hey, what's up, big buddy? We all got some hot dogs in there, and then. But you didn't have this when you started, because I remember you twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, yeah, the beard came. The beard came in twenty two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. It was it was pre everybody having facial hair, guys. Yeah. And then before we realized, oh, this like covers up the chins, you know. Before everybody <laughs> kind of locked into that, yeah. And then I just, I've just had some form of it. I'll cut it all off once in a while, and then people just, people like to be mean on the internet. I don't even notice that people like to be mean <laughs> no, on the internet. What? Really? And people, uh, huh. people like to tell me what they think about my real face, <laughs> and it's never a nice thing. It's funny because I was on the plane watching your special, and. This guy got on and sat down. He, he was grumpy, and he came on at the end and, like, sat down and was, like, kind of, like, sitting there. And he, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, <laughs> insurrectionist. Yeah. This guy yeah. is, this guy is, and then you start your special off talking about that I look like, I look like this oh, yeah. thing, but I might actually, but I talk about my feelings, but he's, he's yeah. actually very thoughtful. Well, I'm sorry, I'm butchering. Like, it, but... Yeah, I think I was like, I look like I use the word tyranny in casual conversation. <laughs> right, I look like yeah, it. yeah. And you're describing, and you're like, and I'm like, yeah. Why am I judging this guy? Because you're exactly right. Like you're a smart, sensitive person, but you just wrapped up in this wrapper. And at by the end of the flight, I'm listening to this guy. Sweet as pie. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope that those are the majority of interactions you have. Like I, some people have good instincts and they trust their instincts because they've proven themselves correct time and time again. I don't. I'm wrong <laughs> almost a hundred percent of the time about my beliefs, and uh -huh. I have such a knee-jerk, quick reaction to things. Yeah, where I'm like, all right, whole, based on what? Right. Based on you know uh -huh. the color of this guy's shirt. Like, what are we doing? What are we <laughs> I know. And I then again they're getting so riled up about yeah. stuff like what's the point? Why am I getting yeah yeah? Exactly. Why am I redlining over stuff that I, I can't do anything? Great guy's got a Let's Go Brandon T-shirt on the airport. So what? <laughs> There's thousands of people in this airport right now. Let him wear a shirt. Yeah. Let him vote. What's the vote? Where are you... This fucking guy over here. This guy. I bet he chews with his mouth open. Watch him. Let me go. I'm gonna follow him into the restaurant at the airport. See if he chews with his mouth. I'm like, what are you being a psycho? You're far worse than wherever this guy is. Right. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. To talk myself down from a lot of wild. I don't like, like those t-shirts though. I don't like those t-shirts. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I mean, some of them are just I know F what you mean. Joe Biden. They're just straight yeah. out. They like, yeah. Let's when you're go walking branded. with your kids somewhere. Oh, I hate that. Yes. I, I, I really, I don't care that you don't like the guy. Yeah. You just don't need that word when you're walking with your children. Yeah. It's like aggressive. A, a, uh, unironically yeah. through a national park. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, kind of like, hey, like this, uh, what do you think paid for it? it like, yeah. Taxes, guys. Like, come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I wasn't even trying to steer politically. I was just saying, like, something that was, like, could easily rile me up that doesn't. Yeah. Like, life's short, and I'm like, really, I, that's such a simple thing to say, but when you really analyze the amount of time you spend looking at your phone, getting angry about stuff, that you're not going to change at any point anytime soon. Yeah. I know. Hey, 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 be taking a walk. Yeah. <laughs> be outside. Did so. you did you mellow at all when you moved out of the LA? I don't know. I get I don't I was never like I was and I'm not like a tough guy, clearly. I'm not like I don't rage out on people. Mm -hmm. I just Puff and puff and then shit talk when I get behind closed doors. <laughs> so uh, a coward. I'm a coward too, <laughs> which is the toughest <clears throat> way to also be filled with rage yeah. and also know you're going to do nothing about it. <laughs> which is then the frustration comes back on me. Look, why don't you stop being such candy ass and tell the guy that you don't like his shirt? Like, well, that would just be conflict and we don't do well with that. Like, so then I got to hate myself. And I think it's just, I, I think more. I, I I think I was mellow here. I think I'm mellow in Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I'm mellow. I th it's the fact that I'll have to take a few hours after one of these incidents that I might have. Right. And, like, look at it, you know, third person. Uh -huh. Go like, well, remember when you said this? I did it. I've got <laughs> contractors at the house, and I think I told one of them to drop dead. I'm like, that's not language. What? <laughs> Why? That's like Charlie Why? Brown. 
So what happened? <laughs> Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing, because they're contractors and they're all criminals. Yeah, because he's being lied to. Yeah, uh, because, they're, because they're liars that you let into your house and yeah. then yeah. they rob you at, at, at you. They're right. Like, I'm yeah. going to do this wrong a bunch of times. Yeah. And I'm going to charge you too much for the thing I did wrong. And anyway. then disappear for months at a time. Four and a half months for a <gasps> bathroom. Yeah. For a bathroom. Did they leave in the middle of, that happened to me, where they left in the middle of construction. Yeah, after they tear everything down. And they went and took another job. Because now yeah, they yeah. got you. Right. And then they came back, and I almost lost my goddamn mind. <laughs> well, that was me yelling at the plumbers who went in and did everything wrong, and it's taking every fiber of my being not to look directly into one of these cameras and say exactly the plumber's name. <laughs> It's not defamation if it's 100% true that you guys are awful. <laughs> but I went in, like, they, okay, bathroom got torn out, remodeled. Uh, and I, I, I always have to, like, put the precursor in. Like, I know, like, home renovations aren't the topic du jour of anybody under the age of 30 who's just <laughs> fighting to stay alive. <laughs> but these are my frustrations as a 47-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As his first house ever in his whole life. And, uh. But yeah, they just like the, the you know the the sinks crooked, the faucet and the showers crooked, the toilet leaks. I'm like, you guys, there's four people here doing this, and you all looked at what each other did and said, "Good job, let's go get some beers." <laughs> and they came back, then they fixed, they just screwed up everything. And finally, I was talking to the one guy, and I'm like, "Hey, you want to come back for the fifth time and maybe do it right this time?" Well, if you're already upset, I'm not I'm like, "Yeah, I'm upset." Like, well, we got other jobs to do. I'm like, "Yeah, this is one of them." We've got this other is one, jobs. This is one of your jobs. Unbelievable. And it, uh, I'm just learning, uh, you know, uh, first home in my whole life. Uh, uh, and I always, I just championed the idea of renting as a, mm. and, and in stand up. Like, it's the best. <laughs> it really I is. understand the whole landlords and the inequality of wealth, and you're making rich people, but also, there's nothing better than someone you call a lord yeah. that you were like, Unclog my toilet. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Roll up the sleeves on that robe. Rather than yeah. <laughs> every time you pick up the phone to fix something in your house, get ready to pay $5,000. Yeah, <laughs> or all... or do it myself, which I'm not good at. But I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. How much more, how much can I add to the bill Yeah. by me ruining this? <laughs> and if it's less than a few grand, I'm like, usually give it a shot. Give it a try. Like, yeah, yeah. I was in the attic. Hooking up tubing that a vent goes to. I'm like, this ain't hard. Like, <laughs> it is. There's a lot of things that there's skill sets involved. There. Some yeah. of them, it's not. Is your husband handy? Very. He is. That's awesome. Very. Yeah. But he does reach his limit. Mm -hmm. So he rewired my son's room with mm -hmm. a fan in there. And he wanted to rewire it and put a new fan, okay? okay. So he put it in, and, and he's done this a million times in our house. He did it in our bedroom. He knows what he's yeah. doing. He did it in my daughter's bed. Like, he knows. Yeah. But for some reason, the electricity in our son's room is so jacked that yeah. the lights turn on spontaneously at 2 o'clock in the morning, even when they're off. The switch <laughs> is down. And my husband's like, I don't know what to do. He took it apart. He did it again. He's like, something is going on. Have you, have you tried praying? <laughs> it, does, it, like does it might sound, not be a technical issue. It, it's, we might have an attachment, <laughs> as they say. It's a possession. Yeah. It's a poltergeist. <laughs> so, so he's they like. They got guys for that. And they're going to charge you too much also. They're yeah. called priests. And we don't trust them either. They don't show up. But, um, well, that's what happened. So he goes, I'm at my end. <laughs> I'm at my, you know, this is it. I'm at the end of my knowledge. Let's go yeah. call a professional. And just what you said, I called a professional. Uh, he goes, well, he was referred. Yeah. He goes, well, I mostly work on elevators. <laughs> what? <laughs> I go, are you an electrician? Well, of course I am. I'm an electrician. I'm, I'm, you know, I got my license. Uh, I got my, but I'm, I'm just doing elevators now. But sure, I'll come out. I go, I don't like that's supposed why, to sweeten the why, pot. Like, oh, why'd you have to say honey, that part? Honey, we got a good you know, news. I, we got an elevator guy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess. I mean, you must still remember what they taught you in electrician school, just right? Just to clarify, you don't want an elevator, please. <laughs> I do not want an okay, elevator. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Just a fan. That's what I go to is elevators, but I won't put one in if you're saying you don't want one. <laughs> you, tell me, you, you tell me I gotta take the stairs up to this kid's room. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want one, I'm your guy. I do elevators. <laughs> so not only did he not show up the first time. <laughs> Stairs 
upstairs. They're outdated. Oh. I did joke with my husband. He's like, hey, wasn't that guy supposed to come this afternoon? And I go, mm-hmm. he might have gotten stuck. Yeah. I did do that joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I called him and he's like, oh, I'm coming tomorrow. And then he didn't show up the next day either. So it's like, yeah. what do you what do you need to show up? I know. It's a job. You don't want a job. You're it's not- also like, how are you making comedians look like the most reliable people I know? Oh, my God. That is a phenomenal exactly. skill. Exactly. When I'm like, oh, I know at least the promise of like, three drink tickets and 50 bucks will get somebody to a show to perform on. Right. But I can't go, here's going to be, it's going to be $7,000 if you could just be here tomorrow. Right. Oh, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> did you like, uh, did you like being suburban you? Like ultimately, like just for our listeners, you went, you were in LA for a long time. Yeah. And then right before the pandemic is when you got the yes. house, right? Yeah, so this whole special, essentially there's a couple bits in the beginning, but then it's like a big, long story. Gotcha. Great time to be a storyteller when everything needs to be 30 seconds or less for the internet. Um, <laughs> exactly. But uh, about it's like so leave, yeah, leaving, leaving LA during the pandemic and being in the suburbs of Portland. So the house I bought is actually in the city, but that's, I barely moved in there in the last few weeks. But yeah. But so, yeah, we were in the suburbs and it was kind of, <clears throat> I wasn't mad at it. I think I got, I'm, all, I'm I'm still like just this delayed adolescence. I still just want to ride bikes and go to bars with my friends and play <laughs> loud music and just enjoy. Like, yeah. I mean, at Christmas, like me and my sister were laughing about something. My parents like, are you kids ever going to grow up? Like, what, what for what? <laughs> For what? So I just like my bones can hurt and I can complain about stuff that doesn't bother me, which is why I do that part too. But <laughs> that's coming. But like it's just like the silliness of it. And so yeah. to be there in the context of, you know, we don't have kids and it was the weird, the, you know, the parameters of the pandemic, like don't do yeah. anything. And we got very lucky to be able to go to this house that was in my girlfriend's family and just like, well, okay, we're just in here. We just, yeah, have dance parties in the middle of the night. You want to roller skate in the living room? Go roller skate in the living room. And it was, it's basically just what Tom Hanks does in Big. <laughs> in a like that's pretty much just how we were living, and uh, I'm trying to recapture that with my own house. I don't see any reason to not do that. Yeah, why not? I don't see any reason to have a house with like, yeah, things that you don't. Oh, don't go near that. It's fragile. It'll break. Like, why is it in a house? Like, Welcome to the dining room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably, probably going to be putting some Legos together on it or something. I don't know. Do you have a kid? No. Why? Why would you ask that? I will say the people on our cul-de-sac that don't have kids. Yeah. We stare at them. Yeah. And judge them. In- envious I, or no? We're yeah. like, why are you here? I knew that was happening. This is yeah. a scooter area. You should be on scooters, <laughs> on a skateboard, what, or they, a big wheel. Do they have an attitude of like get these kids away from me? So they're young. And I don't know what their situation is because mm-hmm. I'm going to say something racist right now, but it's a nice racist. <laughs> They're Asian and I can't <laughs> tell how old they are. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I would have thought that was happening. racist and less, until you said the whole preamble. <laughs> the preamble. <laughs> <laughs> like, they look really young. I'm going to yeah. assume they're just, like, young. But there's three of them. And I don't understand. They could just be healthier. <laughs> yeah. They just could be healthy. But, like, there's three of them. So I'm like, that makes sense. It's a big house. They're mm-hmm. sharing the rent or whatever it is. But, like, are any of you guys dating? Like, I, we don't know. We well, don't so know. You don't know if it's a parent. Right. We have no children. idea because they all look the same in a good way and very young. <laughs> like we don't know. We don't know. Age wise. Age wise. Age wise. Yeah. Age wise. So we're like, okay, but you know, sometimes they're out in the driveway washing their car yeah. and they just watch the kids having a nerf battle yeah. right in front of their house. Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, so yeah. like they probably sorry. like it. They, I'm, Are they aware that maybe they're their only Asian family in the cul-de-sac? Like they just keep staring no, at us whenever we, have, we go outside. Yeah. We actually <laughs> have an amazing, like we mm. have the UN of neighbors. I mm. love it. I love it. We but have. You're worried about the Asians, okay? No, no, we have other Asians too. We they're have Asians talking about the crazy Soviet woman that's <laughs> yeah. staring at them. We have another. We have another Asian family down here on the other mm. end of the cul-de-sac. So it's we have a great. We have Native Americans. Oh, get this. This is the best. I believe they're called First Nations. Okay, they have First Nation people, Indigenous. I don't know. I don't know what to say anymore. The goalposts keep moving. They're so, like the Asians that we had yeah, here first. Yeah. You know? So they have um, these rituals. 
rituals that they do. And when we first Google Earth the house, when we were you know shopping around, we're like let's go Google yeah. Earth it and see. We're gonna go go to the open house. We see at the end of our cul-de-sac, there's like this massive kind of like a labyrinth kind of thing that you would do. Yeah. And so we asked some people when we when we did buy the house and move in, they're like, oh yeah, those are the first responders. What did you call them? Anyways, also, um, <laughs> that is what kind of <laughs> they're for the first that responders. Is what they did to the boats. <laughs> and yeah. they, What's going on over here? And they oh, do no. ritual stuff. So just so you know, yeah. and a couple times a year, you do hear it. I personally love it. I think it's amazing and great. I wish they would invite us. Yeah, well, they don't. Yeah. They don't. Yeah, they, they don't, don't like you, us they don't need at you all. Around. But yeah. they, calling they, them the wrong thing. Yeah. You can hear. You can hear. Trying to bring some poof over for Thanksgiving. They yeah, didn't, where they weren't excited about the Here's, holiday. What's wrong with this blanket? <laughs> so, uh, you know, you can hear the music and you can hear their instruments and they're loud. And, yeah. And then if you go around the cul-de-sac on the other side, you can see like there's fires. It's pretty awesome. I think. <laughs> I so think our you, street. Did you get that vibe? Did you get? I would love it if it was just like a Mexicans in a cult, and you're like, they're, <laughs> no, I think they're indigenous, <laughs> yeah. and it's fine, and it's just Satan worshippers, <laughs> <laughs> just Honduran Satan worshippers. But it like, smells <laughs> delicious, <laughs> like carnitas. Are you? Were you judged in suburbia? Like you look like you would blend in. I mean, if they were, I didn't. Like honestly, it was kind of great. We had. Uh, the, it was so people knew who lived in the house before. So we kind of got like, oh, you're like uh, the, my girlfriend's mom. Like, oh, yeah, we knew her. And and so the old lady across the street was named Shirley. And she's just a spicy old lady would be gardening. And she was just real fun right away. I'm like, all right, you're cool. <laughs> yeah. And then because it's Portland, I mean, it's suburbs of Portland. Yeah. I was still kind of, I'm like, what are the suburbs like nowadays? And I've been a big, like old liberal L.A. And I could be in the suburbs. And it was. It was just white families with Black Lives Matter put everywhere, right. just everywhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it's you know they were still like, oh, everybody, the, the love, love rules this house, and we believe it's, a, it's all right. Okay, we I like, I'm with you, but let's calm down on the signage. <laughs> and uh, so it, it really wasn't. I like there's two kids on on, if they're on skateboards or something, and I'm like, uh. I should be afraid of teens <laughs> like i don't want to be the guy like skateboard and cool man you guys know what kickflips i don't want i you yeah i should then like somebody drove by and honked like it's a polite honk because they were in the middle of the street and drove by and one kid's like fuck you and i was like right on <laughs> i'm like you're an, you're an asshole but that's what you should be you're like 13 on a yeah. skateboard and like it wasn't very creative i would like yeah. it if it was more funny than it was just mean but all right, this, yeah. is, this, is the, this is the most dangerous thing I've seen in this neighborhood. There's like an apartment with like some gang activity, which is consist of like one fence getting spray painted with a sign that the guy would power wash off. And it was kind of more of this volley of right. like, oh, you got me again, kids. I, mean, yeah. I love using this power washer, though. So when you get out there. And uh, But I remember talking to you for my radio show. Yeah. And you were the very first guest ever on the What a Joke All show. Right. How yeah, about that? the very first one. And we talked to you a couple stages during the pandemic. Like mm -hmm. it was when you were up in the house and it was kind of like, it was lockdown time and yeah. you checked in with us and it was like a little weird. And then the next time we talked to you, you were getting in a van. Oh, I was and taking off. You were taking van, off yeah. in a van. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, uh, and then I heard that you were uh, thinking about coming back to LA for a little bit. So it was, it's yeah. been kind of this cool little arc You've been on a little bit of a journey. It was. It, we kind of went up there without knowing what was going on. I mean, it's nobody wants to talk about the pandemic anymore, but that feeling of that uncertainty of the first summer of it happening. Yeah. It was real weird. Like, it was weird being here and not know, like, for the first time, knowing what silence was. Because mm -hmm. we lived in uh, Beachwood Canyon and it was always, it was cars, there was helicopters, there was. Leaf yeah. blowers were still going. The leaf the leaf blowers <laughs> never, <stopped. laughs> never affected by the pain. Those leaves got to get out of here. They got to move to the next yard and then we'll <laughs> move them. It's a war of attrition with the leaf blowers. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, just sitting out there like, oh, there's no planes and nobody's on the highway. And Rachel would just go, she's like, I just drove. I got to like, I got to like vent like Ventura in fifteen minutes. Like, it seems like you're probably going fast. Like, yeah, nobody's out there. Yeah. yeah, everyone's going fast. Uh, but so then when we got up there, it was kind of this, uh, 
you know, I think I talked about it, especially like going door to door, like, because we're like fine trying to find who this our cat belonged to, the stray cat. Yeah. But yeah, like, oh, we're just going door to door. But like, get out of here. Like, well, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> right. But it was like, we had one lady, like, met one guy who was just into mountain bikes, lived two houses down. Yeah. I saw him because he was like carrying a broken helmet from mountain bike. Like, oh, you're cool. <laughs> he was dating his, his wife there. And she had an older kid that didn't live with the house. I'm like, oh, so you're going to be a neighbor friend. Like, it's, it's kind of what I wanted. Just, yeah, have an open beer and walk two houses down to somebody that has cool stuff in their garage and just sit there. And <laughs> yeah, he's like underneath his Mustang. He get ready for the track. Like, yeah, I gotta get ready for the track. Yeah. <laughs> I had a Mustang. I'd be getting ready for the track too. And yeah, then, like, well, King of Hill. Yeah, yeah, King yeah, exactly. Like, and it's, I do really like that sense of community. I mm-hmm. liked it when I lived in an apartment building. I still wanted to know everybody. I called yeah. the sack. You want to know? Yeah, I've. I think there's value in knowing your neighbors. I yeah. love it. I and absolutely love having it. Having everybody's phone number to be like, yeah. well, I'm not going to abuse it, but you see something weird at my house, let me know. I see something we, weird. We at your have house. a text chain going where we just ask the most random whatever, yeah. you know, whatever is on your mind, whether mm-hmm. it has to do with the neighborhood uh-huh. or not. Yeah. I, I love that because we, the first minute we moved in, we had not unpacked mm-hmm. yet, but it was Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we were like, hey, we don't have any, like a roasting pan. We can't find our roasting pan. <laughs> yeah. It's in one of these mm-hmm. boxes. We had three on our front doorstep yeah. within minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. the best. Like that's, yeah. I, I feel extremely lucky and grateful because you can also have shitty neighbors that are just sure. the worst. Yeah. I always, you know, it's the, the, the stand up trope of like, uh, you, you got, you know, you got that one friend that's a jerk or something. Look to your left. If they're not the jerk, look yeah. to your right. Then you're the jerk. I was yeah. wondering, like, oh, am I the neighbor that's <laughs> somebody, <laughs> one of the guys working at my house goes, your neighbor, their trunk's been open for like all day. We've been here for five hours. Their trunk's been open. I don't see anybody out there. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I have to like look in like, I bought a crummy house in a nice neighborhood. Mm. And then I look like this. I look like the guy that just doesn't care if your ring doorbell is going to catch me stealing your mail. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't meet this particular neighbor yet, but I'm like, oh, that would suck if I had the trunk open and your battery's dead or something. It's a Tesla. I don't know how they work <laughs> uh, for this guy's car, but I got to walk up like he's got the nice driveway. Yeah. And a nice staircase where I'm like turning around looking at the view he's got. I'm like, hey, you're doing all right. <laughs> so I'm like looking. I'm like, look, don't look suspicious. Yeah. But then I'm like huffing up after moving <laughs> stuff all day and I got like shit in my beard and stuff and like sawdust or whatever and ringing the bell. And I know it sees me. I don't know if there's audio on those, which there is, but I don't realize. So I'm just like, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I'm starting an audition tape. Like, hey, it's it's Kyle. Uh, Five uh, ten. It's uh, like, start uh, giving your profile. Yeah, like I wasn't self. I'm like, am I talking to nobody? So I think I just stopped. Like, I just wanted to. Uh, ah, never mind. I think I just walked away. And then he knows the neighbor who I did give my phone number to, and he's like, Hey, this is so and so. I live across the street. Why are you at my house? I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I just wanted to say. I noticed your trunk was open. That's it. Sorry. He's trying I to help. Yeah, I didn't mean to freak you out. I'm glad you knew it was me and not some random psycho. <laughs> and I'm like, you see anything weird happen in my place? You give me a ring. Like, that was too much. Because now it sounds like I read it. I'm like, now it sounds like I'm expecting trouble. <laughs> like I'm a drug dealer that got out of the game. And that's why I'm in the neighborhood now. <laughs> you see my parole officer. You yeah, let yeah. me know. I got to be at home. Listen, my, name's Ka- my name is Charles Davidson. Cause that's the name the FBI gave me. <laughs> yeah, across the street. Was there a little bit of a... Uh, uh, stand-up itch that uh had you coming back down to la i mean i know you were you were always doing stand-up you were popping around in clubs up there you were going yeah. on the road up there and the special dirt nap yeah is it's not a guy who took time off this is you're still yeah. very yeah. very much in your element yeah. but, but but did you miss the la scene um <clears throat> I missed, I, I I did miss seeing my friends and like, yeah. like every night, like I'm going to go to this room and I'm going to go to this room. Even if I'm not performing, this is what, uh, this is what I do. And I'd be, I don't watch anybody's comedy specials because uh-huh. I watch everybody every night. Well, I don't watch everybody. And it's probably bad. I should analyze what <clears throat> somebody's end game is. Right. Like, oh, this is the result of all this work that we're doing. Right. But I missed, I, yeah, I missed the camaraderie and how close it was and. Yeah. And uh, so we came back because uh, the missus, she was, she's been writing scripts all pandemic and kind of getting her like her library built up. 
Right. So she's got to get back in the mix. And I was like, yeah, it's not going to hurt to be down here and let people know I didn't die. Right. <laughs> but even like I was saying before, though, even before pandemic, I had like kind of divorced stand up from show business. Where right. I, was, I was just here to do stand up. I would go on the road. I got very, very fortunate that this town gave me credits. Yeah. And enough notoriety that I can go work clubs and pay my bills. Yeah. But then when I was here and they're like in the middle of the day, like, you want to do auditions? Like, ah. Right. Those sound terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I never get anything. I walk in, I see somebody who should get the job. Like, I would, can't wait to see this guy in this part because he's going to do great. <laughs> I guess I just drove out to Santa Monica just to say, hey, good job. You guys, <laughs> you're going to pick him, and I agree. <laughs> That's a stamp of approval. I wasn't auditioning. I was just giving people a tip of the hat. Yeah. But so I was just, you know, I was just going on bike rides and enjoying my days while I was here. And then yeah. going to shows at night and, and, yeah, having a good So That, that part I missed. I was kind of. So the the part about the auditioning and stuff like the the you say you divorced it from show stand up from show business uh, yeah uh, which is really so pleasant <laughs> like like to just purely do stand up there's also but being around here and seeing other people get things and knowing yeah. that whatever you do get that gets your face out there more people know you yeah. Uh, It'll be interesting to see if you can pull this off. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it, I didn't, I'm not, I wasn't saying no to anything, uh -huh. but I wasn't actively like, oh, I got to get with my writing partner and get this script done. I'm like, why? Well, I've done that, and I've gone through the, I just really didn't enjoy the process. That being said, if somebody has something they'd like me to be in. <laughs> and, and some guy whittles in the background. I'm, I'm your guy. I got my own overalls. But... I offer only. Uh, yeah, yeah. Offer, offer only. only. <laughs> non speaking roles. <laughs> I don't want to. I'm just, I'm just the, the process is like, oh, this is a pretty good idea. So I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. And now it, it should be a show. Like, okay, I guess it's going to be a show. And then you, right, you go pitch it and like, that's good. Here's some, some money. Okay. All right, here's notes. Like, that, ch that changes all of it. Okay, I'll go change. You think you take the notes and you go back, like, this is worse. I'm like, but I just did what you wanted me to do. And then you go back, like, where's the woman who gave me the notes? Well, she's on maternity leave. So now you got notes from that guy. I'm like, all right, I'll do his notes. And you change it. And then the woman comes back from maternity leave. She's like, you didn't take any of my notes. I'm like, I did, but then I went to that guy. Just give me the money and tell me you're not going to make it. Just get, let, let's cut to the chase. And I got, and this is, my, yeah. again, having a bad attitude, which maybe I got to <laughs> correct. But, you know, I, I had a, a podcast called The Boogie Monster with my pal Dave Stone for right. like six or seven years. And a production company came to us. Like, this is great. We want to make a show out of it. And we're like, you came to us. That means we get to tell you how this is going to go down. Uh -huh. And they were like, great. And they were a great company to work for. And we made this pilot and we took it to a network. And even the network was like, this is good. Wow, really? You're saying that? They came to the where we, where we were shooting it out in New Mexico, and they were like asking the director, like, "Why are you making the shot? We want more of them." Like that's what we've been telling. You. <laughs> like even the t even the TV people are on our side. This never happened. Yeah, that's and weird. so you make the mistake of getting your hopes up, and even the TV people are like, "It's looking good. It's gotta go." And then <clears throat> it goes up the ladder at the network, and then the main guy who was saying yes to stuff leaves. Oh. And a new guy comes in and says, oh. I don't care. It's all gone. Every like, time. That was like unbelievable. Two years, like over the course of almost two years from uh. start to that, that it's just gone with like the Thanos snap. I, I didn't see that movie, but I know it's a thing. <laughs> You're right. But, I neither, but I know it. But just, yeah. You know, <laughs> apparently a lot of stuff goes wrong. He had all the, anyways, it's fine. He it's had a nice, matter. nice rings. He had all the <laughs> rings. He didn't need anything anymore. So that's why but I got mine I all swear, the time. I swear, I think yeah. they fire people on purpose to be like, you know what? We're going to fire the president of whatever, Disney, mm -hmm. so that we can just get rid of all this stuff that we don't really clean truly and clean slate it. Because that story yeah. is, it's not just common, it's textbook. Yeah. That happens all the time. But also, like, I mean, you want to get conspiracy theory, like, not even conspiracy, like, you get a tax write-off for anything, like, you take a business venture that doesn't work, you get to write that off on your taxes. They're doing that with millions and millions of dollars oh, right. a flop somebody's head's gonna roll they're gonna get paid back on a lot They'll of it yeah uh well we don't and want we don't want to deal with this one so write it off take the loss get paid back on right it. and you can get a little uh dental insurance yeah can you take that somewhere else 
No, I, that that was kind of like, I'm not, but that was the whole point. Is like, yeah. Oh, I, we weren't even thinking about doing right. this, and now right. we're sitting here all depressed. Yeah. And put this ever because we got our hopes up. And if you're built for that, if you're yeah. built to know that, dis- if you can like, <clears throat> like, build in disappointment <clears throat> into the pursuit. Yeah. Like I already do that. That's a hundred percent what stand up is for yes. me. Is that yeah. I'm it might not I might not be the biggest stand up in the world. I've like it's that mix of being very appreciative for what you have versus like can I get a little bit more? <laughs> right. Or will I rock the boat if I want a little bit more? I'm like, well, I can't control any of that. All I can control is the quality of the stand up that I do. Mm-hmm. And if that's good enough, but I could sit there and chop up clips and have more presence on social media and mm-hmm. be comfortable with looking at my own face and my phone. <laughs> like, I don't even own, have mirrors in my house, let alone <laughs> I look at my phone and be like, hey, come to the club this weekend. I'm like, I look like a fucking idiot. I hate it. I just, every the, I know, clip, everyone, I swear who, at it and then I have to redo it. The people who are really great, or I don't know if they're really great, but they're very aggressive mm-hmm. at, about putting stuff out not even just their clips like just them on their phone they yeah. now not one time do they pick up their phone record something and go ugh no no they they every time they go great send <laughs> yeah send like, or like the, or, or they, they don't they have that thing or they know oh, <clears throat> not that take two why'd you say take two it's your phone <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say that George you, you're the director you're the producer you're everything you don't have to slate it <laughs> yeah yeah there's that chip there's that chip that it goes kind of against being a comedian. I I can't follow. They've figured out what works. I also just, I think I'm very worried of my life becoming like, wait, like when do you like change gears into mm. approaching life? Like that could be content. What yeah. If that was a, <clears throat> let's do, ooh, let's tape this thing. No, let's just go do the thing. Yeah. Just go to Six Flags. Don't take. I'll, I'll take a picture of a thing I'm doing, but maybe that's it. <laughs> Did you watch a lot of stand up when you were a kid? Yeah. Before Comedy Central, remember it was called the Comedy Channel? Yes. Yeah. I remember <laughs> those comics. Mm-hmm. It freaked them out. I remember there were like these interview shows. It freaked them out that they were doing that show. They were mm-hmm. like, this one comic, and I can't remember who he was. I'm sure he's probably dead by now. But he, <laughs> he, was, he was talking about, he's like, when you're a stand-up, your job is at eight o'clock, you show up, you perform, mm-hmm. you get off stage, and you're done. No one expects anything from you. You don't have yeah. to be funny on the subway uh-huh. home. You don't have to talk to anybody for the next 24 hours until your next set. Yeah. And then he goes, even just being on this show, and this was, I don't know how many years ago. Yeah, the 90s. He goes, this yeah. is already, you're expecting more from a comic because God. you want me to come yeah. here and and be funny and tell jokes and I'm not in my office right now. It's like someone <laughs> asking, "Can I get a root canal on a subway?" Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm not in my office right now, but okay, I'll do it. And I remember just watching that like, "Wow, like what is he even talking about? I didn't get it." Yeah. Now I totally get it. Yeah. You have to be a comedian 24/7 now. On your yeah. phone, on Twitter, write a thing, shoot a thing. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. I'm on my way to the club. Oh, my God. I'll see you guys soon, Lexington. You know, like you're every, your own show. every yeah. minute of your day. Yeah, your life is the show. And I I, I like, I half refer to it like, like make it like just being at whatever level of success where your bills are paid from just doing stand up. I already say like I'm, was I'm retired because I was going to be doing stand up anyway. I was yeah. going to be the old guy at the open mic just because this is this itch he needed to scratch <laughs> all his years working at Dow Chemical or whatever. He's like, I know I'm going to be funny. Though. That'll be my thing that I do. <laughs> but I just, like, it rubs me the wrong way that everybody's getting into, like, comedians or philosophers. Like, no, they're not. They're people with free time and enough money to not worry about free yeah. time equaling a lack of income. <laughs> that, great, everybody's a philosopher. Right. It's like, no, we just, like, it's pub sports. It's like we're we're the best <laughs> billiards players. <laughs> it's still the thing you were doing at a bar to have drinks with your friends, but then you're like, oh, there's a couple bucks on the table for this one. I'm, I mean, uh, let me actually try and practice this a little bit better. Like, then you go to the big old billboard champion, or, or billiards championship, you know? It's color money for you. Oh, boy. That's still it. It's still bar sports that we're good at, Mm. And that's not to discredit it or make it less than. Yeah. 
but I, I don't, this elevating it into like, yeah. they're the truth teller. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and Socrates are like this. You know? <laughs> I know, but allow me to say, uh, your stand up has, you're part of the problem. Because <laughs> yeah. your stand up has Finally somebody your stand up is so funny <laughs> but and smart and you also have a a depth to it that makes people kind of lean that way like oh you're it's more than pub sports you're actually oh, saying things you. that are that are well, that you. are valuable I'll tell you thank why you're you. part of the problem also okay here we go because you, you make it <laughs> Joe you want to jump, jump in? on in yeah. you make it She's look like this. it's easy. That's one thing, and yeah, you've had point. that for a while. That's kind of well, your style. It doesn't look like you're like, all right, guys, here's another here's one. Something you're gonna I worked like. on. It's it. You make it look a little bit too uh, easy. Uh, well, all right, enough with the compliments. I'm well, not good with but thank that's you. That's why you feel that way. But in in that, so it's, I got you know, twenty some years on it, and it's the the twenty four seven of being a comedian is absorbing what's happening around you and processing it and wondering how can this work as material. So mm -hmm. I might not be videotaping the thing right. that I'm doing because yeah. my job is to use my words to, you yeah. know, describe how my evening went or right. my trip to the amusement park or my vacation is to come back and have, I've been calling it like mistake journalism for a while. Like <laughs> I'll go out and do something stupid. <laughs> then I'll come and tell you about and it. And like, yeah. hopefully a very humorous cautionary tale. Uh, <laughs> But that, I think, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm all mired in these compliments. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't do it. He couldn't stop her compliment. Him to shut up. You just be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I have these moms that are getting together because they found out. I never tell uh, anybody. I mean, Never, especially my kids' teachers, yeah. they all eventually find out. Yeah. Someone yeah. finds me on Instagram or whatever. And so they're getting together and they're like, we're all getting together. Are you going to be nervous if you see us there? Uh, I don't have the heart live. to tell uh, them. I could give zero fucks <laughs> if you guys. I don't care about my set at Flappers, but thank you. <laughs> the moms always go to Flappers. They oh, always God. go to Flappers. Oh, and I God, go, thank you for coming. I go, are you going to, is it okay that you know we're coming? Or does that make you like really yeah. nervous? I go, Oh God, if you knew how little, <laughs> it's not that I don't love the set. I want to do the set. It's yeah. with Wendy Liebman and, and Pepitone. It's going to yeah. be a great night. But they, I love that feeling that they put on it where yeah. they put their, yeah. you know, yeah. like it's well, like a the... chili cook off and we're, oh, maybe you'll get the blue ribbon. Yeah, yeah. And I go, oh God, I don't have the heart to tell them. <laughs> I do these all the time and they're, yeah. it's like yeah. a guy that just sleeps with any woman. <laughs> I don't know any of the names. Come see me whore around over yeah. at Flap or something. That's really what it is. I will have sex with any stand up spot that you give me. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I will do it. I don't care. I don't have oh, any. The kids are going to edit that sound bite. Down. <laughs> it's not gonna go well for you. Uh, yeah, I'm a comedy whore. I well, I usually try to direct people. That like, oh, we found out. The worst was like the contractors, because like you know, I Google everybody's name. Like, well, I looked at your stuff. I'm like, oh, you I'm never. sitting up there like, like I, I, I you know, I, I don't try to be like purposely divisive with the material, but it's pretty left and it's pretty liberal. And I'm like, ah, now I got all these guys like <laughs> in the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll redo your bathroom, you little queer ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Because that's where I would rather, like, yeah. it'd be like somebody smart, you know, like somebody with a work truck doesn't put their political beliefs on the back of the work truck because if you're just, yeah. or maybe you do because you want people to know about it. But it's kind of like, oh, you found out about my work and yeah, what I do. And it's, <laughs> it, 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 it is the, you know, the the sympathy you have with, like, strippers or whatever where yeah. you're like oh you just want to go in your life without somebody going hey yeah. <laughs> ah. right. yeah, okay. i just hate having to tell other moms this woman at gymnastics we got to talking and yeah. she's you know her kid is same age as mine and, right. and she's talking about her work and how one day she just had to get up and move to mexico city for work and 
it, you know, I was like, wow, that's incredible. What, what do you do? And she's like, well, I help businesses strategize that, that, that. And she just, I, literally my eyes just like went blank. <laughs> I had no idea the words yeah. she was using, but it sounded interesting. She's like, it's all about connectivity. And I have, and, well, right. And I'm just like, ah, I'm, I'm not smart enough she for squashes any small of businesses. this. <laughs> yeah, probably. She works for a global corporation. Probably, <laughs> for sure. And then she's like, what about you? And I was like, uh, I, I tell jokes. <laughs> like she just went off on this big thing, and I go, "I'm a clown." Do you ever lie? That's, no. I, Maybe on an airplane because I really don't want to get into it. I'll say entertainment industry, I'll, which also uh, could be porn. Could be so it's kind of fun. Could, yeah, yeah. I, the good big headphones. Yeah, like, with the exception of one. I mean, if we can get into travel stories, everybody's got one. But like, the, usually the big headphones are like, mm, not don't talk to, to me. Anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. One woman I was next to who was just, I don't know if it was, she was new on a plane. And like, hey, 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 like, hey, what, what's that? She's like, I was on a plane like that earlier today. I'm like, just, oh, okay. Yeah, like, they don't get stop. the exaggerated, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. And she had the mask on. Like, I could come down. Like, oh, that, was, that was a whole flight that I, I brought. I karmically. I have this issue with like karma and luck and I feel there's finite amounts of each. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I feel like you could rebuild them up and one of those was me in a middle seat between two new flyers. And just like, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel that bar going back up a good karma because we're going to be quiet. We're going to listen to our podcasts. We're not going to cause ruckus here. I feel like Are it's you? an Uber's more. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. When you get in an Uber, I, w I will lie in yeah. an Uber. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, because right, they're they they seem like you they're don't. up to something. You don't. I've been in many Ubers with you, and you're like, "We're at the show tonight." Like, yeah. you tell them <laughs> I, did, I flipped. I did flip at a certain point. I was always like putting my things in and not and not talking and yeah. And then I I got to a certain point where they're chatty. We're gonna be talking. Yeah, I'd much rather talk about me than you. Okay, <laughs> All right. I'm always the other way. I know about me. I don't know about you. That's uh, that's where I go. <laughs> yeah, so, so I you like hiding you like it. people knowing that you're a comic. Yeah, I don't mind it. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, because you know, a psychopath. <laughs> What's the bad part? He's I mean, doing the, the opera the worst, house in Lexington. You know, know. you want to kind of tell people. I the guess, worst part. Yeah, I guess what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I guess if I had bigger gigs, I'd be a little more. I look yeah. comedian. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, it is a great thing to be <laughs> a comedian. I, yeah, I'm. I'm proud of it. I just, it's. You open up this whole window, like I love comedy. You know and who's really say, funny? Yeah, and then you're like, oh. uh, and then they'll give you that some shitty comic that they love, and it's the best, and you're like, oh great, oh, yeah. 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 I have told when I'm by myself, which I am many times, and it's late at night, and I'm in an Uber. This one guy said, oh, "Are you coming from? You know, where are you coming in home from?" I did do this once mm -hmm. just to make my husband laugh. <laughs> I told him I had just won um, a national jujitsu competition, <laughs> so that he wouldn't even think. About <laughs> fucking with me. <laughs> I did do that one time. Were you in your stand up clothes too? Well, <laughs> like, I mean, like, no yeah. duffel bag you want yeah. it in Yeah, street exactly. I, lit I should have been all bruised up. That yeah. would have looked better. Just put a head. But I did tell someone, quietly. he's like, oh, what do, you, what do you do? And I go, well, I'm like one of the top ranked, like I do MMA, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right? <laughs> and he's like, whoa. And he's like looking at me in the back in the rear, like I can see his eyeballs. And I was like, yeah. So I just came back from that. I won the whole thing. So it's kind of fun. I went to the top. I don't think I can lie well. Which it gets because then my girlfriend's like, that's what good liars always say. I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> shitty at lying. And so I always uh -huh. think of the profession I'd want to put forth. Yeah. But then I know I'd fold under like one question <laughs> like that. Like, oh, you jujitsu, what kind? Like, oh, yeah, uh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> uh, Easter, Eastern. Eastern. <laughs> like I can't even deliver it. Yeah. <laughs> I know that is tricky because they he could have asked me a million questions. Yeah, because everybody does jujitsu now. Like, well, everybody's yeah. a warrior. Yeah, right. exactly. And, and cold plunging. But yeah. but you know you sometimes you as a woman plunge. you'll do you know you'll say I don't know you'll yeah. say something like that hopefully <laughs> maybe like, it's some yeah. sort of like don't touch me I'll kill you. I I like random like I thought a guy was lying to me. 
and it was in I think I was in Wisconsin or something. Is uh, where was it? No, Michigan, because you know where the biggest deposit of oil is. He's like, I used to work in the oil industry. We're talking about gas prices or something. Yeah. I used to work in the oil industry. I'm like, this doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> Dri- driving for Lyft doesn't count as working in the oil industry. <laughs> I mean, very, very extrapolated. Yeah, maybe. But he goes, biggest oil deposit in the world is underneath Wisconsin. They allow drilling in Wisconsin to be richer than the entire Middle East. And I'm like, how do you know that? It's like, that's just facts. <laughs> <laughs> and just the, yeah, like, the, this guy... Go for lift, but it was also yeah. an expert and believe we have more more oil <laughs> the than the entire Middle East <laughs> underneath Wisconsin. And then but then that just gave me like that would be funny if we had like the opulence of Dubai, but in Green Bay, <laughs> and just like they're like like a uh, two hundred story Bass Pro shop and stuff. Yeah. Like oh that was just fun. that's more fun for me. Yes. is to talk to crazy. I mean, I don't. Right, right. I, I can only imagine being, being a woman. It's probably a different. <laughs> scenario to get for into. Sure, for sure, for sure. I just right. want to hear. I don't want to do the crazy living anymore. I want to hear other people's crazy Instead stuff. Instead of yeah. the cheese hats, they just have like uh, an oil rig hat. Just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Games. Fancy flannels. Bugatti John Deere crossovers. <laughs> like just the idea of like the wealthiest place in the world being Wisconsin was so delightful to me. It all came from talking to this goober yeah. who was convinced that there's more oil than Saudi Arabia <laughs> underneath Kenosha. I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> Well, that's the other part of it for me, too, though, is when I started doing um, Live From Here, which is Prairie Home Companion. Yeah. And I had to write these things about each city each okay. week. It was like five minutes of stand up that, that I just had to write and do at yeah. the end of each week. I started I started saying I was a comedian, but I also just started talking. I yeah. just was like, so where are you from? Like, I was... Yeah. For the first time, you know, people are always like, oh, you're going to get material from this. You're going to get material yeah. from my life. What is your life? Okay. I started asking, you know, like I really started mining it. And I haven't shut up since. The, show, <laughs> <laughs> the show's been canceled and I'm still out there well, that kind of the in the elevator. Of, yeah, it was kind of the framework of uh, of Prairie Home Companions, like get down, get to the home yeah. town type of Yeah, and like figure characters. out. Characters. Yeah, because they, I mean, it's so corny, but they truly all have stories. I was I was doing that before stand up. I remember one time my car broke down and I was getting towed. This was before I did stand up and the tow truck driver got another call. I'm like, I got nothing to do if you want to just drive around like we can go get that other car. Mine was on the flatbed part because he's like, "You sure it's kind of I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'll hang out." Like, I mean, <laughs> Oh my really, God. Really, like, it, it, it's everything you're not supposed to do in the wow. modern age to stay alive. And I'm like, I only just talk to this tow truck driver. You don't go to a second location <laughs> no, with a did. tow truck I driver. I absolutely did. I'm like, I got nothing going on. Man. It's hilarious. The car's not going to get fixed at 11 o'clock at night anyway. They'll take, take a tour around Chicagoland. Would you ever take a, a fan up on, hey, you're coming to Boise? You want to? Meet up for uh, coffee or dinner, or do you ever get those? No, I've gotten when it's in the actual context of comedy. I I feel bad because like I, you know, like I don't want to call anybody. But you you get if you if you're very honest with your comedy, or if you just do it, you get yeah. like a a variety of people coming to the shows, you know. Mm-hmm. And you t- if you talk about, uh, you know, yourself in like a vulnerable way, you get some very vulnerable people that come to the shows yeah. and some people that are extra vulnerable that might not know social cues and stuff. And you're like, yeah. I'm glad you just felt okay enough to come to the show. Cause I realize is that like coming out to a thing is probably difficult for you to do. Yeah. But also I don't know how to like navigate after shows like the meet and greet. Cause I don't want to do official meet and greets. I mean, I don't know if y'all do them. I, yeah. Uh, well, I do. I sign my books. Okay, but so, so there's a buffer of like, hey, thank you. Oh, thanks. And then right. they, they, anybody with a modicum of awareness is like, oh, and I'm now stopping the next person from paying you. Yeah, ninety percent of the people. Merch are that does. Way. Merch does a good job of like yeah. facilitating that. But when it's, I just, I don't want to do it proper. I stand here and then I shake your hand. That's like a wedding reception. <laughs> yeah, and it feels so just like uh-huh. sterile and weird. Yeah. And here's your photo. Please move along. And yeah. Like, yeah. So I'd rather like if I'm in a mood to hang like out, Santa. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, get him off my lap now. <laughs> uh, which is how I do fan photos. They say <laughs> um, maybe that's my fault. I don't know. Uh, 
<laughs> but so I'll just be in the bar afterwards. But then you get somebody that's like, oh, I, you know, your comedy helped. I went through a rough year and t- talk about loss or something. Mm. Uh, and they're having this moment that it was hard. But then yeah. I still do eh, the beers and this. And I still have that crowd. I like both crowds equally. But that crowd, like somebody will just come out of left field like, what kind of shot do you want? I'm like, I, this person just lost both parents in a train wreck. And I'm trying oh to give God. them the time of day. But but God, maybe not a shot, but I'll see you at the bar. And so now I kind of just stay yeah. in the green room and let's like, till like <laughs> enough time's gone by. I'm like, Oh, if somebody's really still hanging out there, yeah, yeah. I'll go out. But, but so, those stories are amazing. Like yeah. those stories of you got me through that time thing yeah. is pretty impactful. And when you know, like, I mean, I, th- I think I saw a clip of, like, Stavros do it. So he's like, yeah, we, we know we're doing this for ourselves. Like, we know, like, like, I'm glad it helped you, but we're doing it because of a, a reward for ourselves. Like, let's be honest. Was like, I'm glad the runoff. Yeah. <laughs> but the side effect is you feel better. But I- yeah. So, you know, Maria Bamford does a lot yeah. about mental health. Yeah. So that's sometimes the audience members that she gets in. And mm-hmm. she talks about, like, they kind of come there, like, Almost for medical advice. And she's like, uh-huh. oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I can't. And I know, I know Greg Fitzsimmons also talks about uh, like, I found my perfect <laughs> meds. And people will come, a lot of comics talk about this. If they oh, yeah. talk about the the meds that they found for depression, audience members show up like with their you know, like, what do you think about this one? I take it on an empty stomach. What do you think? Should I take it with food? And no, nobody's like, throwing lewds on stage anymore. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. It's like, I don't, I'm Everyone's not giving any it. medical advice. It could break you off some Wellbutrin if you're feeling a little low. <laughs> but I can't even imagine, like, people just showing up, like, wanting to connect on, on those levels. Yeah. Well, and also, like, the, especially if you have podcasts or something, like, the parasocial relationship now is not just like, Oh, I've watched your special. And then that's all I know about yours. Mm. No, I listen to you every day. Anything we're casually, you know, you get here, we're setting up, we're doing a podcast, but then I find myself, I'll listen to like certain shows where I'm like, Oh, I know these guys. Oh, if I saw them live, but Hey, what's up? (laughs) Yeah. And that would happen from doing podcasts. We're like, Oh no, this feels strange to me. And I don't like, I tried to do Twitch over, uh, pandemic where I'm like, oh, I mess around with video games, but man, we'll see what it's like, you know, we'll see what, yeah. what doing. And then people were there and you just know they're watching you. And I'm like, Oh, I'm not being funny. Like you don't have to do anything. We're just watching you do this. Oh. Like, Stop doing Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. Oh, so it'd be the same if I just left my blinds open. Is there, yeah. <laughs> I don't like this at all. <laughs> Is there any difference in, your approach to comedy or how you're analyzing the stuff you want to talk about since you started therapy for the first time. You mentioned in your well, special, you went to therapy. Yeah, the therapy I went and then I stopped going. I, I really thought I was like, I got this thing's bothering me. Fixed it. Like I really went and was more of a diagnostic. Right. Like, That's the thing. That's what it was. Okay. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I haven't. So it's not really a thing you're. Well, no, I, I, I have a hard time starting it as a regular issue. I've kind of started, I went, you know, few times here or there thinking like, Oh, that's, that's what it is. Uh, and then I'm not doing it correctly. Cause I still, I know I'm wrong with what I'm saying, uh, but it does feel like the contractor kind of thing. Right. It's like, Oh, well we've opened up the walls, <laughs> but you got, now you got asbestos in there. So we got to call the asbestos guy. And that's going to be another three weeks, <laughs> three more thousand dollars. And yeah. I had a hard time with the therapy, not being like, like right like an end the, game. it's always a cliffhanger right right <laughs> you're never wrapping it up yeah and the reason you feel that way is tune in next week <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i know that's well you got to get the right therapist and everything and it really was i just went and got just a couple things that i thought were answered i'm, I'm sure the therapy heads are like you're not doing it right at all but i've always had this as i say in the special this midwestern relationship with the concept of therapy is like yeah. Oh no, you do therapy if things are like bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you don't just go. Did you kill somebody? Yeah, like you go because you have secrets that <laughs> yeah. are keeping you awake. Like I don't have that, so I guess I'm just fine. Like the, the sense suck of, it up. <laughs> yeah, well that's that Midwestern sense of like, yeah, everything's kind of bad. <laughs> right. Sure. But you're gonna pay some money to have somebody else tell you it's kind of bad? Just <laughs> yeah. Deal with it. Yeah. yeah you're 100%. arrogant. You're arrogant if you think you like like not arrogant, but your your expectations are silly if your life would be perfect. 
you're kind of arrogant if you're like, I just want better for myself. Well, look who wants better for Ooh, themselves. Oh, fancy pants. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's how, yeah. Like, but it was, there was always kind of this air of like, oh, look who got, oh, somebody's doing all right. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. Look at somebody's doing all right. <laughs> I think, man, oh, nothing bothers them. Oh, okay, 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 okay. We're just going to laugh that one off. <laughs> so it's kind of like, no. And, and maybe it's, you know, again, a um, masculine thing. Like, well, you got your problems, you handle your problems. Yeah. That's how I handle uh, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you drink, and then uh, right. just like uh, covering the ears of your problem. Sure. Yeah. But so no, I, th- that didn't change. <clears throat> I think the way I would approach comedy, if we're going to get inside baseball about it, is like I still want to like, oh, if I'm mad about a thing, I have to be like, well, why am I mad about it? Right. Am I mad because the thing is incorrect, or am I incorrect? So mm-hmm. that's how I was always just writing jokes for a while yeah because somebody's viewpoint of like i'm fed up with all this stuff it's like well maybe you suck right (laughs) you ever think about the reason everything around you is lousy is because you suck and you (laughs) should be happier and not but then they would lose that angle right that's their persona right and i never wanted to like get stuck i would rather my persona also be beneficial to my mental health <laughs> right. like my persona is like well why does this upset me maybe it's because i have a history with this <laughs> subject matter like i'm gonna go read about road rage because i have it bad and also maybe something funny will happen but i find out it's because you take things personally that aren't and you decide that oh the reason somebody didn't use a turn signal in front of you is because they knew oh that's kyle behind me we hate him and then they cut you, and, that's, and that's not it at all yeah. and i'm like oh now i'm learning how to cope with road rage also i can write this bit about it because i go off on something there right but right it makes me reflect more because yeah. i don't want to be just the guy that hates stuff oh, right he's had right. enough like yeah. can i be a therapist right now oh sure. <laughs> Road rage, how does that manifest for you? If, if right? Like, Isn't that the kind of stuff they uh, say? Yeah. Tell me what that means, basically. I swear. So, but I've you're saying it's of, really bad. It's really bad. Like, what does that mean? We I've, all kind of go, what the f- I know where certain people live. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What? Don't what judge do him. I'm that's not a, judging that's him. That's a horrible therapist, by the way. That is a horrible therapist. Yeah, really kinda... He just opened up. Wait a and second. Someone did not stay in character. <laughs> and now I'm feeling vulnerable, and this is why I don't go back there. Oh, my God. No, tell me what that means. You have followed people home, like the show there's, Beef? There's circumstances that have happened where I've been like, and okay. And I know that now. Right. And let's hope wow. that that knowledge is enough. <laughs> that's pretty and amazing maybe, maybe postcards from somewhere on the road show you up would've... and they're not ominous they're just like hmm. oh. <laughs> you would have lost your mind then on the way down here um, I was getting on the freeway and a Tesla mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> was backing down off the on ramp oh, no. and that's... all of us were like wait what where are you going you know what I mean and I was behind a truck so I couldn't really quite see what was going on but I did see a Tesla coming closer. Yeah, you probably would have lost your goddamn mind. How do you go on an on ramp and then go, nah? I think the beauty of the Tesla is you could just blame it. You could just be like, ah, well, oh, stop <laughs> driving. <laughs> they got a broken one. <laughs> I'm not but, running this thing at yeah. all. I mean, here's what I am not saying. You should do what I do. <laughs> you are your own person. But I, I used to, not anything. I'm not going to say crazy, crazy, not anything crazy, mm. but like when I first moved to LA, I was overwhelmed with the traffic. And then yeah. you do have those auditions on a Friday in Santa Monica. That's, you know saying, what I mean? right? like That's the most you, dangerous person in LA. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're losing your mind. Cause you're like, how am I ever going to get there? And then I was a personal mm. assistant for many years. So that was just bananas, just yeah, driving panic. all over panic. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I did was I pretended these people that were doing things that were so obnoxious, annoying, uh-huh. unsafe, um, mm-hmm. just lost a loved one. That's, uh-huh. That was one of the, that was exactly one of the things. It was like, you don't know what anybody else's story yeah. is. Yeah. Right. And that was actually the conclusion of the bit where it's like, I've just been spending all day writing everybody else's story. What about my story, guys? Who's writing my story? (laughs) It's time for Kyle to have a story. I'm going through this four-way stop sign. I'm not looking. (laughs) Figure it out. Storyboarded everybody. But that that was it. Like the the very same thing. Like, yeah. 
I bet their life is a lot worse than mine. I don't mm. hope that it is. Right. But that's, that's the way for me to not like, I'm giving into this juvenile response to yeah. something. Yeah. I'm being a baby. Like I'd have to shame myself first. Like you're being a baby and you don't know what anybody else is going through. But yeah. then you see the person that cut you off and they're just like. <laughs> 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 they're but that's right how now. they deal with. <laughs> watch your car in flames. That's how they deal with death. They deal with death by laughing, Kyle. Okay. Well, then there's some, the more, there's some more death mechanism. for you. What's yours? <laughs> so I go right to death all the time. I really go right. I don't want, I'm going to kill somebody. But I do like manifest, like, like I've. Like I'll hex people. I know, like, <laughs> oh it's, it's like the safest way because I'm never like, oh, kill that guy because it's like macho talk that I'll never back yeah. up. But yeah. like, oh, if there's entities in the world that need me to light a candle when I get home, I'll light the candle and I'll make sure that the mirror behind it is facing east. And that, if that means that that guy's gonna have a real shit evening. All right, let's do it. Let's light this candle. I, that, now let me that's ask you crazier this. Crazier than just going, oh, fuck, kill a guy. <laughs> when you were living in the suburbs. Mm -hmm out of LA, which is the worst traffic in America. Yeah. Maybe Atlanta. Houston. Uh, <laughs> was it was it more mellow? Did it? No, no. It didn't? It's gotten so much worse. Oh, really? Now I live in Portland, Oregon, which is, it's not traffic, it's people. Like, they've done episodes of Portlandia about it, so I'm not uh -huh. gonna re- It's- Bicycles? The most, I, <laughs> I, I look out for the bicycles. I'm a bicycle guy. Right. But it's the, <clears throat> Like I said, everybody drives cars like it's it's like an air fryer they got for Christmas and they're not sure they're going to keep it. They're so <laughs> terrified of the functionality of a vehicle of just like, oh, oh these God. buttons. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm, oh, <laughs> ooh. Like there's there, it's refreshing being here where I know like, oh, I got to right. get off at off the 101 at Woodman. Yeah. Is that when the. Solid white line is actually splitting for the lane. Somebody's going to cut in front of me. Like, I appreciate you your gumption, it. sir. <laughs> yeah. Because if it was Portland, I would have been lined up three miles already, knowing that, oh. well, the Woodman exit's going to be coming up soon. So we better just get over and to they, the side. Rest, have... rest of the highway open. Rest of the highway open. Better get over here because we got we... Good thing we left three hours early. We got time to kill. We're going to do about 10 under the speed limit on the highway. <laughs> oh they asked the brake That's pedal hilarious. for consent. May I, oh may I step on uh, you, brake pedal? Uh, do you feel safe? Oh, God. It's uh, so uh, funny. Dylan, Dylan Jenkins, to shout out a uh, great comic in Portland, Dylan Jenkins, as a joke. He's like, people say we don't have an accent here in Portland, but we definitely drive with a slow southern drawl. Like, <laughs> oh, I, 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 after you, sir. I'm like, no, 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 I do believe you shall merge before me <laughs> and i heard that i'm like oh hey man I've, I've i've actually run out of like i'm not articulate regularly i stand up i like putting a couple five dollar words in there because yeah. it makes you're putting on a i'm saying the same yeah. stuff everybody else is saying you're great let's dress it up a little bit yeah there's a lot of seasoning in the cabinet yeah but when it comes to just being mad I have just run out of swear words <laughs> at the point where I don't know what to yell anymore. <laughs> and it sounds, and it's just been the word coward over and over oh, again. Oh, that's like, hilarious. Like, oh, like I'm calling coward. out a gunfighter or something. Like I just can't. There's no swear that will that will fulfill the need, <laughs> like the emotion I want to express. Like I got to learn oh another God. language just to get mad at somebody. <laughs> that would be a great reason to learn other languages. Just the uh, swear words, though. Uh, Abafangul! Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, Abafangul. <laughs> yeah, we'll throw a Malacca in there. I think that's uh, Malacca is a great one. Right? Yeah, 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 I'm Greek in there. I remember that one from my friend's parents. When you have kids, at least I try to oh. really tone down. Someone cut me off recently. Mm -hmm. My eight-year-old is so trained. She goes, I bet you're going to wish they get to their destination safely. <laughs> And I go, you're right, sweetheart. That's what we wish. So I have trained them. Someone does something super just, yeah. you know, irresponsible, dangerous. And I just go, I really hope you get to your destination safely. I'm going to codify a blessing. It's like you've auto-corrected something. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. nope, this comes out as a blessing. Right. You know what the feeling is. I know yeah. what the feeling is, but uh, my eight-year-old now is so used to it. She's like, Daddy it's gives great. them the finger. Yeah, well, <laughs> she will tattle on you so fast. I I oh. I think it's too violent now too. Like yeah. I, I realize that. Yeah, be I'm careful. getting mad at people, and especially I go back to Chicago and stuff. I'm like, oh, there's yeah, they're just shooting at you. Like, yeah, all right, I gotta. 
No kidding. I got like. And you look like not a walking Second Amendment. So. I, do, well, I look like somebody who, yeah, would would want to engage, or yeah. who would but, fire back. So it's yeah, probably yeah, nobody's back. pulling over. Like, pull over. Oh, I, okay, it was all words. We were all just, <laughs> yeah. just professional wrestling. No, I heard I what you said in it. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I, I I I don't know why I go to road rage. I have several other issues, uh, <laughs> but like Rachel would tell me, like I'd broken two computers in our time together out of like. Anger. Uh-huh. Not even could be like I forgot passwords or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it may, I'm not. May, I'm not a tough. I just it, like you smashed, hacked? smashed it. Yeah, I smashed it. Oh, you bro- Oh, I thought you hacked in yeah, and got like that. No, no, he no. Got oh. frustrated. It was like ah. old timey oh. hack where you old just physically hack. break something yes. to get into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was just because it's I can't understand what's going wrong with something and mm-hmm. I feel useless. And yeah. It's like traffic. You don't have control over traffic. Yeah. You don't have control over technology. You don't understand what's going on. I know. And I, I would just break a thing. She's like, go to Goodwill, get a stack of dishes, and put them next to the computer. And you can break one of those every time you want to smash your computer. Oh, God. That's hilarious. <laughs> also a Greek thing. I really think you might need yeah. to embrace this culture. I did grow up with a lot of Greeks and Italians. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I do have a little bit of the, there is a satisfaction to hearing something like shatter shatter like that like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you grow up with yelling <laughs> no my parents didn't yell too much i mean yelling as a form of conversation with a lot, a lot of the greek and italian kids it was like yeah. louder households yeah and ours could get loud in like a fun way mm-hmm. but not like nobody was like or about, yeah, it wasn't like a scream at you if you're... Because my right. parents, it was scream at, for anything, joy, happiness, <laughs> yeah. upset, just, you know, consequences. It was just loud, loud, loud all the time. Volume. Right. Volume, volume, lots volume of volume. Volume to dominate. Yeah, loud. If I speak louder than you, then my thing will be what's heard. Like, oh. But also, like, partying loud. Like, just, it was just loudness. Yeah. But the kids that grow up that way are able to cope with a lot of anger around them. Like... My my daughter's roommate comes from this big loud Italian family, mm-hmm. and they all just yell shit at each other, yes. yeah. Yeah. and then no one's feelings get hurt. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and when you grow up in so place quiet, someone raises their voice. You're like, "What did I do?" <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. That's why I justify yelling at my kids. I love you. I love you too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, it's the, like the the come home when the street lights are on kind of generation. Yeah, it was also the park was. Really not close enough for my mom to yell. Yeah. Right, but that wouldn't stop her. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why does everybody have to know? Two miles <laughs> away. Whatever. Are you in your bathroom? You're in your bathroom. All right. <laughs> so where can people stream the uh stream your special? Oh, just on the old YouTubes. Nice. Just because I just self produced this one. Cool. And, oh uh, great. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I had the last couple. I had great. to help a 800-pound gorilla. Bobcat directed it. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, it was kind of... I love the spotlight on the side. Yeah. You would kind of block, intermittently block It was fun. They were like, like, oh, should we put a thing on that? And I was like, that ah, kind of looks cool. It would look great. Yeah. I love that effect. I, we had a good crew. It was at uh, Acme in, in Minneapolis. Oh, that's Acme. Uh, yeah. Oh, And I hadn't wow. been there in a while, and that place is... That room's so that good. That room's the yeah. best. Yeah, so... Yeah, I did that on YouTube. Oh, I think great. in March. Yeah, I think it's March for. I, I don't know. I gotta get. I gotta get that business part down. Yeah, it's March sometime. We're gonna put this out earlier, but uh, we'll circle back and tell people about it for sure. I appreciate when we get closer. Yeah, yeah. Really funny. You're always so funny. Oh, get out of here! Thanks for, for letting real. me hang out. Yeah, this is no so bread. great. I'm so sorry about the bread. I'm gonna correct <laughs> that. Gonna I came. Win. I came here hungry too. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh come on! We do have a pan of tone. <laughs> <laughs> We do have a panettone we can crack open. My buddy's family owned an Italian deli, so I know, like, I'm like, oh, I see all the cap. You know, like, all the things yeah. yeah. around the shelf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All this stuff. Yeah. Um, Love it. And you're touring. Where do people follow you on all your things that you Kyle don't Kinane. like to yeah, participate I, in? I, get, uh, I got a management whose job is to just cattle proud me into believing in myself. So they're doing, <laughs> they're doing all right job at that. So, yeah, just Kyle Kinane on his socials. And then I use bands in town as far as oh, yeah. getting, like, direct emails I, like that's my mailing list is if, oh, not cool. that people want to follow you on another thing but i use bands of town bands of town's great so well awesome congratulations come back anytime thanks you guys i promise bread next time all right i'll bring steak got it joe you know <laughs> i was gonna say i, I wouldn't be rude i didn't